And we're live. Good evening, everybody. Um, just before we start, just a couple of things. If you are um, watching us, um, good evening to you. And if you want to um, say hi to us, like or share um, this video or this screen. Um, but also, if you want to comment and ask Kay any questions, if if you haven't given StreamYard your permission to use your name, it will just we will just see it as Facebook users. So if you can write your name after your comment, um, and we can um, answer any questions you might have. And this evening, um, I have the lovely Kay Avalon coming to join us. Hi, Kay. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm looking forward to having a chat and answer any questions that anybody wants answered. Good. And tonight, Kay's going to be talking to us about kinesiology. And so my first question to you, Kay, is how long have you been um, a holistic therapist and what got you got what got you <laughs> into kinesiology? Yeah. Hi, um, right. Well, I was interested in natural cures and remedies and avoiding medicine from well, way back in my late 20s really because I always found that medicines and drugs tended to have side effects and someone gave me some aromatherapy oils and I thought oh my goodness they're absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. so what I did was because they have therapeutic effects yeah. and I was just smelling nice I thought you know what I'm going to read up on this lot which is what I did and I read this amazing book by Maggie Tisseron, which you may know, because yeah. you know Maggie, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And it was aromatherapy for women and children. And I studied it and I just got my head around it really, really quick. And I thought, right, okay, I'm gonna study this and get a qualification, then I'll become a massage therapist. So I did. And then when I was it was a bit like the end of Blit Rose, really, to be honest. I met a reflexologist who was actually in the aromatherapy massage class and she said, hey, do you know what, like, they've got reflexology running on such and such a day, why don't you join that? And I said, oh, all right then. So I sort of got me two pen of worth into that as well. <coughs> way between I, I, um, I learned Reiki. And uh, what happened was I was having a few health issues, which is the typical way that you get into a therapy. And my oils weren't sorting it and my reflexology weren't sorting it. And I, I did the, the, the thing that we all do. We all go to the back of the health shop and yeah. it's a thing, which is supposed to be the, the be all and end all. And I had these allergy tests and I laid off a few things for a while. And there was a bit of an improvement, but it was very, very short lived and it didn't sort out my issues at all. So um, I thought, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And at this particular time, I was living in Bristol and the go to magazine in Bristol at that point was a publication called The Spark. Right. I've never heard of it, but it was no. that there, Bristol. OK. And so um, I, I got I got The Spark and it literally just dropped open on the page of um, kinesiology. There was an article about it, and there was this woman in Porter's Head, which at that time was just about six, four, six miles from where I was living in Nelsey. And I thought, oh, what have I got to lose? And I just gave her a call, and then I started having treatments, and she was also a teacher. And so I started training. And um, the rest is kind of history, really, because I've been a kinesiologist for many years now and um, I am currently working remotely. And um, as you know, I also offer readings and Reiki and vibra vibrational medicine and, and a whole plurofa of other, other things come into, into what I actually do. So that is the story. I bet you go to us now. <laughs> <laughs> so can can you just explain to us a little bit what kinesiology is and what makes it special? Well, what makes it special is quite hard to say, actually, the word kinesiology. A lot of people struggle actually saying it, let alone know what it is. Um, the interesting thing is kinesiology, the word kinesiology actually comes from the Greek word kinesis, which is movement. 
So um, there's some information for you. But kinesiology, as we know it today here in the United Kingdom, actually was brought to us by a guy called George Goodhart. And he was a chiropractor way back in the 60s. And he discovered that there was a relationship um, when he was working between the muscles, the meridians and the body organs. And he also discovered that by strengthening muscles, he could improve the body health of endocrine glands, um, muscles, muscles themselves and various issues in the body. Because kinesiology does follow the Chinese principles of meridians and, you know, yin and yang as well. It, it does embrace all, all of that um, Chinese medicine as well. So, yeah. you know, George Goodhart clicks, ah, this works. And then he um, trained a guy called Brian Butler and Brian Butler changed a guy called John Fee and John Fee actually brought a health system the first health kinesiology health system really to the United Kingdom in 1975 called Touch for Health, which you've probably heard of yourself. Um, vaguely, vaguely. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very well known. And um, it kind of developed from there, really, kind of grew. And there are different types of kinesiology. And, and the type that I do is, is classical kinesiology. And... Um, yeah, it's, it's a really amazing therapy. It's absolutely amazing because it's the only therapy I know that actually gives a direct message from the client's brain through to the therapist. And, it, and, and it, how does that work then? How does that work? Well, the client is um, led down or connected to remotely as I'm working now um, through dowsing. And you are, I work with a template of questions and depending on the muscle reaction, whether it's weak or strong, I get an answer to those questions. But that's coming direct from the client. The cli I'm not verbalizing those questions at all. It's coming through their muscles or when I'm working remotely, it will come through their energy through my through my dowsing pendant. Yeah. And um, you get those <laughs> answers because that's straight from their mind and, the, and, and straight from their head, which is yeah. remarkable because a lot of therapists are amazing they can do some pretty cool stuff but they can't get a, a tailored message for the client direct from their mind and even their subconscious yeah. so um yeah that that's essentially how it works so um if if you're doing um a manual treatment then the client is led on a couch and i would usually use what i call an indicator muscle which is usually an arm muscle and I have my template and I ask my uh, ask the questions. I touch I'm touching the questions on the template while I'm testing the arm. And okay. the arm will go up or down in response, either weak or strong, to the questions I'm asking. So what that means is I can find out where the imbalance is and also how to fix it because they choose their own fixes as well. With, and, and this system is called biofeedback because it's coming straight from the client's brain yeah. through me. So that's kind of how it works. So do you ask the questions out loud or no. do you ask them in your mind? Because I would, I would think like sort of if the client's hearing the questions, they might try and resist. Yeah, they probably would actually. <laughs> no, I ask them in my mind um, and, you know, the amazing thing about um, the human body is it can read. I know it sounds crazy, but you don't even have to think or ask. If you're touching the question, Yeah, the patient's body is going to react to that question or that solution or that fix that is right for them. Yeah. You don't even have to speak. The, the human, it, the energy feels just so amazing. And I do find that absolutely incredible. I mean, I, I feel, you know, really the truth of that is we are, um, we're a spirit with a body, aren't we? The spirit knows it all. <laughs> so yeah. That's probably why when you put a code or a question on the body, you can get a, a muscle 
response without verbalizing or even thinking about anything yeah so what kind of things can you treat with kinesiology anything because kinesiology i mean you know legally we are obliged to say we do not treat or claim to cure any disorder as therapists but we do find imbalances and some of those imbalances might be um, digestive issues. It could be PTSD from way back. It could be ancestral trauma. It could be an emotional issue. It could be an electrical issue. For example, someone might be all over the place and really, really wobbly and really, really dizzy and feeling really, really ill. And they, they may actually have something called geopathic stress which is an electrical imbalance. And that is quite easy to pick up with kinesiology. And um, I'll just tell you something very, to, so you can make more sense of that. When the muscle testing is going, um, is happening, I'm using something called finger modes. So I'm asking if the issue is structural, whether it's chemical, whether it's emotional, or whether it's electrical and the muscle will react on one of those finger modes and then right. that, of course i can go for the relevant electrical or structural or chemical fixes cool yeah so, um with um how, how does it how does your kinesiology fit in with your other work can you com combine your work yeah that's the beauty of it really because in response to the remedies and fixes, you can bring in aromatherapy or you can bring in crystals, homeopathy, and I've done nutritional training as well. So you can the, nutri, the, the nutritional supplements come into it. So everything sits sits in with kinesiology as a as a, quite an amazing framework actually. And I also can bring my readings into it. And even even use tarot cards in it as well. And you just literally ask the client what they want through the muscle testing, and you can use pretty much you know any of your tools. Absolutely amazing. So that would be like sort of depending on the questions that you asked and what you find in response to those questions, you would then tailor yeah what you use to help them. Yeah, yes, because the um, the client will, will show muscle strength on what they require and then yeah. they, they will show a change of indicator to indicate how much they want of something and how long they want to use something for. So you can dose, you know. It's not just like, oh, they show strength on, say, magnesium. It, they're body will actually tell you how many tablets of magnesium for example they need to take at a time yeah. uh, per day and for how long how long so um yeah it's all tailored by them so you there can't be any errors you know because they're choosing it yeah so many, it, sorry you know. sorry i interrupted you then it's all right <laughs> their body's wisdom chooses what they need right okay. there's no bigger expert on us than us yeah you know what i mean yeah so yeah. Can you, what what would happen if the body showed up allergies that's an interesting one um i would i mean because i have a template on everything and it's dog basically you know um, so I would I would go through all of their typical allergies and they would need to lay off that food. But usually with allergies, I, I do find that, that leaky gut is very, very common, uh, which is an issue where the gut wall has been weakened and certain products are, are, are coming into the bloodstream allowing toxicity to go into the bloodstream and allowing nutrition to leak out mm. and so really what you, what we really want to do is is get rid of the whatever that toxic molecule is sometimes it can actually be um a harsh food believe it or not that pierces the gut wall 
tomatoes will do it. It tends oh. to be let's in rich food that pierce the gut wall. And um, other times it could be an overgrowth of mold or an overgrowth of a particular pathogen within within the client. We we all have something called um a bio a bionome or something like that. I can't think of the name on the spot, but it's something like that, bionome, which is a mixture of bacteria and molds and little parasites, which is fine. But when there's an overgrowth in any one of them, they can actually cause little holes in the gut wall and then we get our allergies. So that has to be sorted out really. So the any toxins have to be chucked out. So you can do that with, with supplements, you can do that with energy work, you can do that by putting codes on the body, and then you have to strengthen the gut wall. Mm -hmm. So you need your friendly bacteria in there, and you, you, need, you need to make sure that they're, they're laying off the foods that are causing the problem. And sometimes they might need to lay off them long term um, this can happen sort of with more senior people because sad as it is, after the age of like 37, 37 to 40, the gut wall does get quite thin mm -hmm. and then it's easier to get pierced by, by pathogens and toxicity. And that's when most people start to get allergies and intolerances. So basically, it's a combination of repairing the gut, staying off the toxicity, and sometimes staying off the food temporarily or long term to repair the issue. Yeah. Would you, would you suggest then, <clears throat> if somebody did have an allergy and you um, worked with them and they laid off the food, would you slowly reintroduce that food to see whether it still was having an effect? Or would you say come back to you so that you can retest that before they reintroduced it? I that yeah, I know, I understand. I guess it depends on the strength of the allergy and how bad it made the client feel. Right. Um, because if it was just a, something a bit of an inconvenience and it was just a bit of bloating, I could say, well, just try a little bit of it. But if you bloat, just stop. Just just come right off it. Yeah. Um, but if it's something more major where it absolutely causes major fatigue and stuff like that, then they really should come back to see me and, and just see where they are, you know, yeah. and what's going in the body at that time. Because when, I mean, you know yourself as a, as a therapist, when you're working on a client, you're working on them at that time, at that space, yeah. with what, uh, you know, whatever's going on in their path at that specific time for them. So um, it is quite useful, really, if they can come back. I don't force them to come back. But no. it's very useful to come back. Do, do, do you, I mean, obviously, I mean, I, I kind of, I work kind of in, in a little bit of a different way to you with the kinesiology side of it because I do the bioenergetic screening. Yeah, of course. Kind of like an electronic version of kinesiology. Would you like sort of advise a client because obviously we find sometimes that when we've heard something it opens up an area where another issue can come aboard that's right so would you would you recommend a client come back to you for a, a few sessions i would always recommend the follow-up session to see because then I can check in and see how how far along their path they've come with the original issue. Yeah, and I can see if there's anything about to burst forth and cause another problem. Yeah. So yeah, I would I would say come for at least a follow up. You know, um, I don't I don't. See, the thing is, it really does depend on the individual. Yeah. Yeah. Too like I don't force people to sort of like get into a thing of like, oh, you've got to have six, you've got to have three. I do yeah. recommend the follow-up, you yeah. know. And after that, I mean, a lot of people will come just just because kinesiology can, it, it does balance you. It does raise your vital force. So that's your positive energy. So it's going to lift your mood. 
it's going to and therefore because it's raising your vital force that has the effect of helping your immune system your mood your sleep and your general vitality and um your general health so it's kind of like a, a health tonic and it's yeah. a good idea to have a health tonic with something at least once a month you know yeah. because especially these days we're under a lot of stress and strain um, yeah it didn't that just wasn't happening years ago i mean yes we've had a lot of um modern technology i can't say that word technological advances but they have their drawbacks yeah. because now we're exposed to more chemicals and emissions and that takes its toll on the body so um i would recommend that people check in at least once a month even when their original issue is is sorted really yeah just kinesiology just can really really balance you out you know it's just it's just um a great elevator of energy yeah so that means that you'll have more vitality in the day you'll sleep better at night you'll feel more grounded you'll be able to think better and so on i i definitely felt clearer when i came to you i mean that was a couple of years ago now yeah, well, uh, that, wasn't it? yeah. Time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was it was really relaxing and i did i did find a difference with it uh, yeah. within myself and i yeah. It's like any any of our therapies or therapists, we find, um, I think, like, sort of, I don't think people look at alternative therapists as, like, we do, say, going to see the dentist every three months for our, a three-monthly checkup. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people see going to see a, um, a holistic therapist more so as um, a treat yeah you know rather than coming to see us because we have an issue i mean yeah i feel that is a common health philosophy actually dawn but actually it is it's kind of like a safety net yeah because we can kind of buffer the client before an issue happens Yes. by leveling them out on a regular basis and I'm bringing them into balance like monthly at least yeah that sort of is is a bit of a a bit of a shield for them really against their everyday stresses so actually can really intervene and and stop anything getting out of control or exacerbating yeah it's not generally viewed that way by most people. They say, oh, a treat. And you think, oh, no, it's not a treat. It's a necessity. This is yeah. health maintenance. It's not yeah, a treat. Definitely. Yeah. Health maintenance, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. So what would you say um, is your most common issue that people present with? Emotional stress. <laughs> <laughs> emotional stress every time um i mean you'll have your ailment you know for example i mean i'm just going to give you an example i'm not going to name anyone or anything no, like no, that, no. obviously but i had a, a young lady um she was in her 20s come to see me and she was having absolutely agonizing stomach cramps that the um the GPs and everything couldn't get to the bottom of. She had all of the tests. And when I did the kinesiology on her, it was because she'd been taken advantage of when she was way young. Mm -hmm. uh, and the emotional issue was holding her gut. You know, like, you know, you've heard the expression gut feeling, everybody has. Yes. You know, things tend to hit you in the guts. So vibrational formulas helped her and chakra healing and stuff like that but that's not the sort of stuff that general medical practice is ever going to look at no no and uh, gut issues are very very common because a lot of people buy into health foods regardless of whether they're right for their body or not and and unfortunately, yeah, like seeds are great, you know, like um, it's good to have seeds, but 
summer seeds can completely cut through the gut wall and cause absolute havoc and then you get your leaky gut so gut problems are, are, are very prevalent i'm trying to think what else um problems relating to dehydration which you probably come across because people never drink enough water yeah um brain fog is another one people come to me about and stuff like that so you name it i've treated it so going going on to brain fog then what would you say is kind of i know there, there'll be different reasons why people get brain fog yeah but is it um can it be mainly due to like sort of nutritional stuff or like obviously like the electromagnetic energy that we've got around us and well, we it's interesting that you say that the electromagnetic stuff really really doesn't help um but you can actually it really does depend on the client i mean you you could test a client and test their electrics with the electrical mode and they might actually be rock solid on an on yeah. electromagnetic stress to do with appliances um but when you actually test them on the physical mode, there could be an issue with leaky gut because leaky gut causes brain fog. Right, okay. I mean, once once the, the, the toxic proteins actually get through the gut wall, they can get into the circulation and they can go up to the brain and cause mer merry havoc. And that's why you get your brain, your, your brain fog. So it really does depend, but electromagnetic stuff is is a big issue, and I always um, I always tell people to protect themselves and and wear protection from from electromagnetic stress wherever possible, and I do refer them to you with you and your pyramids. <laughs> and I, I think I think as well, a lot of people are becoming more and more sensitive to these things. Where I know it it's. I know there's more of it out there now than that what there was when we were younger, but I think a lot of people are becoming more spiritually sensitive as well, aren't they? I think so, yeah. I think people, you, there's a general evolvement, isn't there, of mankind at the moment. Yeah. So I guess that evolvement is, is raising our vibration against stuff that really isn't good for us and we're kind of pulling away from it in a way. So, yes, I do feel that there is more electromagnetic pollution out there and there is an, there is an increased sensitivity. But, you know, there's there's just been so many advances and, and so many different electromagnetic appliances and emissions that have happened in a very short space of time, really. I mean, yeah. if you think about, you know, you can't even get the nice old-fashioned light bulbs. No. <laughs> oh, I used to light them. <laughs> it's all I did used to light them. It's all this LED stuff now, and that is that merry havoc, really. You know, yeah. it kind of um, fools your body into a state of permanent daytime. Yeah. Right? Which is why orange glasses are not a bad idea in the evening seriously i might get a pair of my get, get a pair of myself so yeah, yeah. You think, i mean you could talk about i mean that is a whole subject in itself electromagnetic stress it's just a huge subject yeah, yeah good idea for for people to um to wear protection but also in a treatment i can work on certain points and hold certain points to strengthen them so they they come away from the the, the, the treatment stronger and as you know there's certain energy fields that we all have like we we have our meridians which can be strengthened and chakras can be powered up and we have our eight energies as well you know just within weaving within the aura field so yeah. all can be worked on you know to because that that's all electrical work so we can kind of counterbalance it but it depends what the client wants <laughs> and the best way to find out is to test them and, and use the thing at finger modes and kinesiology and just ask if they want a structural fix chemical fix emotional fix or electrical fix excuse me okay. your allergies <laughs> yeah allergies make it go <laughs> <laughs> 
only caused the trouble of having an ailment myself just for this. <laughs> yeah, commitment. Oh, commitment it is, yeah. So um if somebody came to you um for treatment, um what could they expect and how long would the treatment generally last? Right. Okay. I mean, at the moment, like I said, I'm working online. Um, so in, they can just sit in a, in a chair and I would have like a consultation with them prior, you know, prior. And I would just go through my template and connect to their energy through dowsing while they just sit there you know, chilling out, really. Yeah. They don't have to do anything, which is great. Um, if they were actually physically present, then they would just lie on a couch. And the only rule that they, they do, that I do have, is they must ar arrive hydrated because dehydrated muscles do not perform. And they have to take anything electrical off so they can't be wearing their phone or anything like that. And they've got to keep their eyes open. Because if you close your eyes, the muscles just flop. They they close and they close down. And normally the first treatment I would say is about an hour and fifteen minutes, just a little bit longer. And generally speaking, thereafter they're usually about an hour. Yeah. So it's just that first treatment when you're kind of attuning yourself to the client's energy, and they may have questions. So um, yeah, they just either lie there or. Um, they can lie the the other end of a camera or sit the other end of the camera while I do my work remotely. Yeah. And so they, you know, there's nothing freaky happening. And um, the, even when the client is present with me, there's no taking clothes off or anything like that. And they're covered yeah. with it. It's very non invasive, actually. Cool. And I just literally just. <clears throat> arm muscle for the testing so i would ask if they have any issues because i prefer to use an arm muscle because it's a, it's at the end of the day it's the most convenient yeah um, if it wasn't convenient i can use a leg muscle or if they do have you know general muscle weakness and they can't do muscle testing they can bring someone and i can test through a friend or family member right. as, like surrogacy and they're just connected yeah. So I can work for somebody else on their behalf. Oh, that sounds really interesting. Um, you've also got um, a new project that you've just recently started, haven't you? Yes, the cortisol project. And, cool. and this, is, this is something I'm really, really passionate about because there's a lot of stress going on at the moment. And when we're in what I call red alert mode. We're producing two hormones, <laughs> basically, in, in major quantities. First of all, you've got adrenaline that's getting you ready to, to leg it and run. Yeah. And then you've got cortisol, which is basically flooding your body with sugar. And because uh, there's so much stress these days, um there are there are so many what i call there's there are so many what i call hormone interrupters like led lights which yeah. you into thinking that it's permanent daytime and stuff like that so guess what you don't sleep people are producing too much cortisol and they're not sleeping and if you're not sleeping what happens is the body's a little bit mean to say the least the um the gut the gut wall gets very very i mean it, it may have a weakness anyway if you're over a certain age it's going to be weaker anyway after a certain age but it not sleeping actually weakens the gut wall and when the gut wall, wall is weakened what happens is you know um like otters make dams to, to block up a river yeah it, it's kind of like that effect where there's a load of fat goes gets laid down protectively by the body to actually protect the gut wall. And then you get all this upper fat that you can't lose for love nor money. Oh, um, right. that is actually, that actually happens due to an overproduction of the hormone cortisol. Oh. 
So it's linked into not sleeping deep enough, not having enough sleep, having a weakened gut war, um, a lot of stress going on and, and so forth. I mean, what really got me um, into cortisol, the, the cortisol project, is I was having this issue like, oh, my gosh, I can lose weight everywhere else, but why not here? Why not here? And then I actually worked out it was down to really not switching off at night in my head. Yeah. So the sleep wasn't deep enough, and therefore my cortisol was just flooding into my body weakening my gut wall and then you lay on fat there and you think huh what what's going on <laughs> so i started to explore cortisol quite extensively and i have a page called the cortisol project on my facebook i've got videos from people talking about their life from a spiritual point of view um i've kind of reeled off some chemical and emotional links to, to cortisol just now but I thought wouldn't it be interesting to try and find out if from a spiritual point of view a certain group of people didn't have the tendency to put on this weight around the middle and a certain group of people did you know, I just wanted to see it from a spiritual point of view because that's not really been researched before. So that makes it really interesting to me. So if anybody wants to take part and send me a video, I'd love to have you on board. And there's certain questions that I will send you which are not at all personal. They're very, very generic. And whatever I find out, I share. So it's win-win for everybody, really. Cool. So what have you found out so far? How, how, apart from like sort of having a good sleep, um, how how else does cortisol affect the body? Oh, massively. <laughs> In a word, absolutely massively. Um, it's, it's really, really linked to that stress response when yeah. you just can't settle, you know, and you can't, you can't get into a deep sleep. And what then happens is your circadian rhythm, your your sleeping pattern just goes completely completely weird, and you, your metabolism goes completely weird. So you do start to put on weight, and you cannot lose weight, whatever you do. So those those are the major effects of um, producing too much cortisol, really. But of course. Because it's linked in with adrenaline, don't forget their busy mates <laughs> <laughs> can get high blood pressure. Um, you know, that can cause weakened valves and goodness knows what, vein problems and, and a whole load of other stuff. Um, and of course, when you've got the gut issue, where you've got like um, little holes in your gut wall, which is why all that fat is laid down and all of this cortisol is triggered, then these toxic molecules, which are triggered by cortisol, can go through the gut wall and they can cause brain fog, aches and pains, depression, you name it, they can cause it. So it's better to have the right amount of cortisol is yeah. a denominator so that so that really does mean pay particular attention to your sleep and your stress levels yeah making sure that you sort out a decent sleep pattern so as you know because you're you're in, you know a similar field to me it means turning off all of the electromagnetic stuff like a couple of hours before you go to bed, limiting your exposure. Don't have anything electromagnetic magnetic by your head. And maybe invest in some orange glasses so that your overexposure to fake lighting is not <coughs> into a state of permanent daytime. Because what the other thing that, that I'm just trying to bring this together on the spot what the, the other thing the, hang on <laughs> let me let me just get my, my get my trigger um 
your body pr produces the hunger hormone in the daytime. So if you're in permanent daytime, your hunger hormone's going to go crazy. So you're all, you know, it's really going to mess up your appetite. <laughs> and that, you know what I mean? And yeah. These LED lights actually kid the brain into thinking that it's summer all the time. Wow. Now, this is a really um, interesting story. If you go back to the Ice Age, summertime was when everybody laid down their fat to get through to the winter, and our bodies haven't changed since then. Right, okay. And, and we haven't evolved to overcome all of this technology coming at us you know that that is part of the problem and i and i suppose as well um living the in the world that we live in now our lifestyles are so quick and so fast aren't they our daily lives are so quick yeah. and, so fast. and we're kind of tending to live constantly in that fight or flight mode aren't we yeah so, like i want to be somewhere and yeah. what I people is you know you've, you've got to make time for meditation or a nap or something and they say well I can't I have I haven't got time and then I say well you're a human being not a human doing yeah you know so we're not designed to be on the go all of the time we're supposed to chill out and rest and meditation's good for that as well and it gets you grounded and it allows you to get to a state of equilibrium so you can think straight and you can perform well and you can focus on things properly yeah. because what happens with people these days is they're just not grounded they're just like spinning and spinning and spinning and you you should make that the priority i mean i always say to people don't get out of bed if you're feeling wobbly or not happy do something, you know, just say some affirmations or listen to some music so you get out of bed with the right frame of mind, feeling positive and feeling yeah. grounded. Yeah, you, you've got a very valuable point there. Yeah, and I think, think like, sort of, if we're constantly living in that fight or flight, obviously you're releasing that adrenaline all the time, aren't you? Right, of course. <laughs> so um what's the word um adrenal fatigue yeah this is another thing that that kinesiologists see a lot of where people you know their batteries are so low low i mean like having adrenal fatigue is like having a flat battery on a car yeah you know you're just trying to run continually all the time yeah. and it cause depression me symptoms and that's when we really have to support the adrenals with good nutrition. And, you know, some suggestions are um, maca and ashwanga and, and stuff like that in conjunction, in conjunction with a, a healthy, balanced diet and rest and meditation, of course. Yeah. And plenty of fluid. Um, plenty of fluid. Yeah. Plenty of yeah. fluid. Yeah, and I think that's sort of, I mean, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of that um, sometimes. I, I'm so busy running around, I forget to drink. Really? Yeah, I do. Carry a bottle of water around you. No, I don't. No, not always. No, especially if I'm running around the house doing doing jobs in like sort of I've got a thousand things on my mind, and then it's gone like sort of three or four hours, and I think I need a drink. You know, I can't remember the last time I had a drink because then the the headaches kick in. <laughs> And you know, and not to get the yeah, yeah and, and I think that is a lot that's kind of familiar to a lot of people. I think you know, because our lives are so busy at the moment and we're not making time for ourselves, we forget to hydrate ourselves, we forget to nutritionally feed ourselves because we a lot of people eat on the go or eat at their desk. I mean. This is something I do I do flag with people actually whenever I see a client, regardless of what kind of client it is, if they say that they're too busy for this, that and the other, I ask them the question of, about do they actually like their life? You know, if they're too busy to do anything for themselves and it's 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 all about work, do they actually like it? And 
would they like to change it? And how would they like to change it? Yeah. You know, is this lifestyle actually serving them? I mean, I know yours is. It's just that you just get caught up. Yeah. But some people who are here, they're in everywhere, have got to do this, got to do that, could actually change it, but they're too scared to change. And uh, that is another thing that I look at with kinesiology, getting over the fear of change and talking through those barriers, you know, and helping yeah. them forward. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I'd i said to the uh, therapist that we were talking to before, you know, I we as therapists tend to see people when they they see something as a last resort. Yeah, exactly. They've been through consultants, yeah. physicians, doctors. Yeah. That's what, yeah, that's true. And and it's quite sad, really, you know, like sort of. We should be first. <laughs> we should be. I mean, even if we like sort of, we, we run, I mean, we are complementary therapists because we complement other therapies. We do includes medication that you may be prescribed from the GP or the hospital or whatever we complement yeah. we we work alongside it's not them and us yeah, where exactly. a lot um, in the not too distant past we were seen as them and us yeah yeah I, I I totally agree I mean you do get some kinesiologists although it's rare actually recommended by doctors these days and they certainly do recommend um hypnotherapy and yeah. osteopathy and, 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 and chiropractor so it's it is getting a little oh, bit it is, definitely. isn't it it yeah definitely and i kind of like sort of two three years ago i was supporting someone um who was under a pain team and they would have regular stays in hospital. And I was actually given permission to go in at any time of the day. Yeah. To give that patient healing. Yeah. Which I was quite surprised, you know, like sort of a healer going into the hospital to heal, you know. But that was, I mean, they welcomed it. So that really kind of showed how things are starting to turn and change, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that and that is very, very good news, you know, for well, for everybody. Yeah. Um, I mean, with kinesiology, it, it's interesting that you, you use the word complementary because even if someone that is like on a whole plurifer of drugs and medicines and whatever, you know, they can still have a kinesiology treatment. Yeah. Because they would bring a sample of their meds with them. Yeah. So they tell me about them. And any challenges would be in, with the with them in the circuit. So I know for sure that there's no interactions with anything that they're taking, you know, which is um, quite remarkable, really, because yeah. I, uh, with any ther other therapy, that would be quite tricky, you know, because you, it, you're not actually testing anything as such. So um, that does make kinesiology particularly useful because it does actually stop any fear of interactions or s side effects. And it does mean that you're not going to prescribe a supplement, you're not going to suggest a supplement that's going to clash with something or interfere with the absorption or go against any doctor's orders or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Have you ever had um, anybody come to you that, or has had to stop coming to you because their GP has the yes. <laughs> yes. And it's like, oof. yeah. You know, I mean, this was years ago though. And it was like, well, I don't know what that is. So you better stop. I yeah. don't know what I'm doing. No, I, I, had, a, I had a young girl who was spina bifida. And she would constantly get, I mean, she didn't have a lot of feeling below the waist and she would constantly get ulcers on the soles of her feet. And mum had brought her to me to help her heal and use the oils um, to help um, with infection. Yeah. She went back to the doctor and the doctor said to her that if she continued coming to me, then he would refuse to treat her. Oh, that's just so amazing, isn't it? That that, yeah. that, that happens. Yeah. So small-minded. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, you know, 
we have to go along with it and of course, yeah, uh, yeah. It's their journey and what can you do yeah. but hopefully you? things are as we as i said you know we're, we're seeing changes you know seeing changes. yeah yeah i mean um we do hear reports of the celebrities using alternative therapies and stuff yeah. I, you know i don't know if i'm allowed to say this but i'm going to take a risk <laughs> Hugh Grant is, is a regular kinesiology user. Is he? Oh, yeah. And Gemma Craven. I don't know if you know Gemma Craven. No. Quite a good actress. Look her up when you're off, when you're off this interview. But um, I can't remember what she's been in, but she's quite a well-known actress. So, um, and, and even the royal family do it, don't they? They use homeopathy and stuff. I think, I think Charles has used homeopathy and... So it's out there. Yeah. You know, it's out there with high-profile people. So uh, I, I feel that it will continue. And I, and I feel the um, evol evolvement of us going into this new age, if you were, it's, it's just automatically going to pull people that way anyway. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody's got any questions for Kay, um, please, please ask, because we're coming towards the end of our – our evening um if people wanted to contact you or come and see you and wish to have a, a treatment with you Kay, how can they contact you well there's two ways i'm on the facebook so they can look me up on facebook and i'm, I'm under k avalon on facebook um or they can find me on home aroma on facebook which is h-o-m-e as in the word home and a separate word aroma a R O M E, or they can drop me an email at K K A Y at H O M E A R O M E dot co dot UK, K at home aroma dot co dot UK, or Facebook. Brilliant, thank you. Well, it's been really kind of um, lovely to hear you talk about your passions. Thank you. And to explain a little bit more about what kinesiology is. Yeah, you were a wonderful interviewer as well, Dawn. You were really, really good. So, and thank you for uh, being so intuitive with my responses and everything. That was really helpful. Oh, um, you're welcome. You're welcome. Really, really helped that you would, sorry? It really helped the flow. Good. Is there anything else that you would like to um, share with our viewers? Try it. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> if you haven't tried it try it because you'll be amazed what you'll discover about yourself and it can actually help you with goal setting and your ambitions you can you can tune in on what someone wants to achieve and see where their blocks are you can find out that all out through the muscle testing as well and i can also combine kinesiology with a mini reading afterwards and there's different combinations so do get in touch and and have a chat with me and I'll, I'll have a free five minute consultation with you and see if this is a way that would be useful for you and it would be lovely to hear from you brilliant thank you and thank you so much for joining us tonight Kay. absolute pleasure all right we'll say goodbye to everybody bye bye everybody